I'm going to speak in English, though, because it would take me about three hours to say what I would like to say in French. Um, so apologies if, if that's not um, the best thing, but I think that's the, what, we, what we can do today. I'm going to talk to you about healthcare, um, and I'd just like to know before I start, how many of you are from the healthcare sector? Okay. How many of you are consumers of healthcare? We expect all of you. Yeah. So um, the broader context is obviously the, the digital economy. So you know it's a large and growing internet economy. You, you, across the globe, you have widespread adoption of mobile and smartphones, and the broader penetration of social um, networks. So that's not that's not anything new to you, I would expect. So what does that mean for healthcare? Healthcare is one of the industries that actually hasn't transformed into the digital age. There's a need for it, though. Um, healthcare faces, um, and I'm sure you're well aware, you know, issues around the burden of cost. So most geographies, the demand for healthcare services due to aging of the population and technology advances outstrips the ability for most countries to pay for it. There's underserved segments. So in certain geographies, you don't have access to critical specialists, and that is in developed countries as well as in developing nations. And there's a you know, widespread um, set of evidence around supply sh shortage. So you know, with the current model of healthcare delivery, we expect that there will not be enough hospitals, um, there will not be enough doctors, and there will be not be enough nurses when we all need those services. Um, and there's a broader opportunity around prevention and wellness. So good studies around you know, the importance of managing chronic disease and conditions. So, there's an opportunity for digital, you would expect, but there are some structural differences in health. So you can't exactly say, well, because I can bank online, I can interact with my healthcare provider online, um, because there's differences in the nature of the relationship that you would have with your physicians or your other healthcare providers, because of the structure and competition of the industry. It's highly regulated. There's not the same kind of competitive forces that you would see in retail with the entrance of Amazon in other industries where there's a new competitive threat that sort of gets the large incumbent monopolies or duopolies to actually move. And then there's the broader thing around resistance to change. So doctors and nurses and healthcare providers really don't have a huge incentive to change their ways of working. So I'm going to share a little bit about the you know, consumer perspective. So what do we see in healthcare and how do we see that evolving from the perspective of the patient? So I'll show you a picture of Mary. Mary's today in the UK. She's, she's 80. She has arthritis. Um, she can't actually um, stay at home alone. She's officially fit to do so. Um, but she has, you know, a mixed bag of drugs. She can't go up her stairs. She gets a hot meal service once a week. Um, and none of the people that she sees remember her. Does that make sense in this world of digital economy? Not really. So what we're starting to see is the emergence of um, a new model. So I'll, uh, a characteristic of that would be Karen in Sweden. Um, she's got a chronic heart condition. Um, her friend recently referred her to a site that's sponsored by a, ph a pharmacist chain. She got that on Facebook. And 50% of the growth in Facebook users is actually people of the age of Karen, primarily looking at um, pictures of their grandchildren, but you know, starting to emerge in terms of a source of referrals. She's able to do an online chat with a pharmacist, and she's able to get that consultation without actually going into a pharma pharmacy and generating um, a, a doctor's visit. And then in the future, um, we would see, you know, Claudette in France. We're a little ways away from that in France, but you know, you would see a website designed to manage your diabetes. You would have, um, you know, tracking of blood glucose up into the iPhones. People managing their health and lifestyle choices accordingly. Records would be stored on a secure website, and that, that would include interactions with physicians and other allied health professionals. And the genetic profile, which she'd paid for out of her own pocket, is actually something that's used to match with a research d a database. So that's the sort of picture of what's possible. Actually, each of these things on this, p on this page are, are actual products and services used in different geographies, but not something that is widespread. How many of you have had an electronic interaction with a healthcare provider in France? None. So how many of you have actually booked your airline ticket on, online? How many of you think the healthcare setting should be more like how you deal with your airline? 
So in, in fact, um, you know, there was a good show of hands, in fact, we believe that there's going to be a fair amount of public pressure to shift the healthcare system. So where do we start? So from an IT standpoint, because we're all IT professionals, well, today, actually, we're predominantly paper. How many industries would you say are predominantly paper? I looked at the airline industry, actually, and you see the start of the early um, sort of moving from punch cards to Sabre, so a centralized re reservation system, was in the late 70s. So we're actually, you know, way back in the late 70s when it comes to healthcare. You've got fragmented events, individual episodes of care, and oftentimes people with chronic illness are actually moving the pieces of information together so the healthcare system doesn't have to repeat tests. What we're starting to see, and I'll share some examples of other geographies, is automation of workflow. So there's no reason why you know, the supply chain that is health shouldn't be more automated. A lot of the industry is actually about information and information exchange. There's a good opportunity for digital there. We're starting to see increasing exchange of information between providers, good evidence of early opportunities there around lab results and drug orders. Kaiser Permanente, as an example in the US, has 50% of their interactions with patients online. There's also an emergence of common standards and certification. So if you're from the banking industry, I would expect that you would have a, have a sense of how tr tricky it is to even manage basic transactions, manage multi-channel, and manage a, um, customer information. It's imminently more difficult in healthcare because the data sets are actually not as consistent and the technologies underneath that have not evolved at the same rate as you would see in other sectors. But over time, we're, we expect to see you know, a variety of devices that capture diagnostic, clinical, and patient information. We expect a supportive workflow that goes between organizations and new tools for wellness and prevention. How many of you use a, an app that tra tracks um, your nutrition, weight, or lifestyle-related things? Ah. <laughs> How many of you use um, something that connects to your iPhone for running so you can track your running performance? Okay, there we go. Um, how many of you, of you could see you know, that being extended into health, where you start to say tracking you know, how you take um, drugs, um, how you manage your lifestyle? And actually, 80% of the cost of the burden of health is actually related to chronic conditions. And chronic conditions are those things that actually you, know, you have multiple interactions with the healthcare service and actually are much more manageable with diet, exercise, lifestyle decision, and appropriate drugs. So why do we believe this is an interesting space? Um, there's an, a, a huge investment of IT infrastructure, and we believe that that's gonna create a, a volume of data that we haven't seen before. In the, on the left-hand side, obvious geography is the US. There's over four, 42 billion in US stimulus funding around getting basic level of adoption of electronic records in the US. Lest you think that that's just a US phenomenon, let's look over to the east, more China. China is making similar investments with 25 to 30% growth in IT infrastructure, and actually a leapfrog in some geographies where there is, hasn't been infrastructure be before, and there's a whole sort of investment on going right to telemedicine for rural, he rural health, going right to fully automated hospitals. We're also seeing accelerated developments in digital and social media, and I, I just talked about a couple of those examples. We see this space as a, it's quite evolving and it's quite hard to describe, so we spent a bit, of, a, a bit of time over the last while looking at it. There's three dimensions to this digital and social media and health. One is the digital channel for health, so that is healthcare providers interacting with patients and with consumers, as you would the airlines, the banks, um, telecoms, anything else that involves self-service. That is booking appointments, looking at lab results, and I mentioned Kaiser having 50% of their interactions with patients online. The Veterans Administration in, in the US, interestingly, is quite experimenting with a virtual waiting room. So you have people coming that would otherwise have to come into um, a hospital being treated through social techniques, through applications that are fundamentally online and not actually ever um, seeing a healthcare provider. Now, there, there's a, a limit to that. Of course, you can't do things like MRI scans in people's homes, but there's a certain amount of you know, social connection, routine follow-up, and the like that is possible here. 
The second one is digital innovation for consumers, and this is a growing space of innovation. This is primarily outside of the healthcare sector, so moves at a very different beat and has a very different um, set of business models and constraints. There's an interesting site called Patients Like Me, um, which is a social media type site. It's the Facebook in healthcare, where patients are actually, you know, a, a huge number of patients are actually signing up to find patients who have a similar type of diagnosis, to learn about the treatment options that are available to them, and to contribute to research. So you see the social media phenomenon and things that attract people into social media also working in health, because fundamentally choices around health are often about trust and relationships and understanding referrals, and certainly we don't get a lot of information from the public health system about really what goes on in there, and that's changing as well. And the third one is um, around digital innovation for social impact, and this is thinking a bit more broadly, but if you think about you know, messages around prevention and wellness, so getting kids in schools to eat healthily, getting people to exercise and the like, there's an increasing use of digital tactics in that regard. Um, and an interesting example from the US is Michelle Obama's campaign on Let's Move, which is effectively getting teenagers in the US to be less fat, um, which is a, an admirable thing to try to do. Um, and it effectively, you know, they've integrated a digital campaign which includes video and messaging that's much more targeted than the previous you know, public health campaigns that we've seen. And there's also an element that's two-way interaction. So you look at a video of Beyonce saying, you know, isn't it great to move around? But then you, ha you're ha you have the opportunity to chat with your friends about your recent performance. We're also seeing um, sort of new capabilities around ecosystems, and this is a little bit more because this audience may well be um, a bit more techy, but there's new platforms for scientific research that sort of start to build on principles of private or shared cloud, where you end up combining a set of services um, and technologies that can help to accelerate um, collaboration. And one of the important and exciting areas is around scientific research where there's a lot of you know, independent discrete tools, independent labs, independent you know, activities that actually you're starting to see start to collaborate, start to share um, bits and pieces of information, particularly around rare diseases in oncology where you know, it's a race to the cure. Um, and there's a number of technologies that are being um, delivered to the market that can accelerate people's workflow um, in the scientific and research setting. So in our, in our view, this is sort of a quick tour, but in our view, the opportunity space for information advantage in health is really around you know, three key themes, um, decision support and analytics. So the charts that I showed you around big data and the um, ab ability of, for us to understand more about the patterns of care and outcomes, we see there's an opportunity around platforms and analytic capability to better understand what works, what doesn't work, and bring more evidence to healthcare. Digital and social media, and the emergence of new business models, and, Im and importantly, innovation in health in the way that we engage with patients and activate them to change the way that they're considering their behaviors in relation to their health. And then ecosystems, so new ways of external collaboration that actually facilitate data in exchange across geographies and accelerate scientific techniques um, for the value of bringing new solutions to the healthcare setting. And I'll leave you with um, one, one sort of point, um, which is you know, if you think about digital um, and you think about the potential for disruption in other industries, I'll show an analogy on the left-hand side to media. So you see the complete um, disintermediation change in the whole shape and structure of the industry from the, from the perspective of you know, product architecture at the bottom to the amount of products that are introduced to the way that content is actually accessed and used um, to the way that actually where consumers are, are actually engaging with products and services and how they ac actually think about you know, using um, media, whether that's text, music, um, and the like. So I asked you, you know, what are the possibilities in healthcare? And I think you know, it's groups like this that actually can bring innovation to this space. The possibilities are you know, quite analogous, um, where you see you know, really um, different set of products and services that can come to market, and really different ways of working on, on a problem that affects us all, which is our healthcare. That's it. <laughs>